Welcome, everybody. It's time for another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. So grab your board. We're going to catch the latest wave. Today we have a guest host with us here. We have Brian Hansford with us. Hey, Brian. How you doing? I'm glad to be here. Okay. All right. I'm looking at your office here, and it looks like you have sausages or something hung on the roof there. Yeah. So uh, Matt Hines is the driver behind the radio show here, and I'm actually sitting in his grand office. Oh, cool. For those that don't know, Matt is the master of anything meat. And uh, <laughs> I didn't know has, that. He has some sausages hanging in the background here. So Cool. Uh, yeah, it's fun. It's a fun office. All right. Well, jump in. You got your guest with you here. I'll let you take off. All right. So uh, I'm Brian Hansford with Heinz Marketing, uh, Vice President of Client Services, and I'm filling in for Matt Heinz this week. He's a road warrior quite often, and this week he's actually out doing some speaking and uh, have the honor and pleasure of actually um, filling in for him with my colleague, Robert Pease. Robert, how are you? Hey. I'm great, Brian. Uh, I barely made this, so I was trying to run from one meeting to the next. But I'm excited to be here, and I'm excited that we are hijacking Sales Pipeline Radio uh, from Matt Hines with the uh, the marketing cranks. Uh, so good, good to talk to you again. Good to be on this. Something that we started last year, and I think we both have had an extremely busy first quarter. Uh, yes, we're a little behind yes. on our cranks episode, so we're just going to kill two birds with one stone for this thing. Yeah, so for anybody that doesn't know, we actually have another podcast from uh, Heinz Marketing that Robert and I conduct. It's called Marketing Cranks. And so Robert and I can be rather curmudgeonly uh, with certain things, marketing or B2B sales and marketing. And, um, you know, we don't we don't get too cranky. We want to be constructive, but we like to add a little bit of, uh, I don't know, maybe a, a curmudgeon, cranky cranky spin on things poke poke some of the common uh, misconceptions or maybe the trendy misconceptions that we see and just try and offer some advice that people can actually find constructive to cut through the noise um, yeah, so no, no, right. uh, enjoy that and um, Robert actually Robert where are you calling in from when you're doing planes trains and automobiles what what uh, part of the world are you in right now I'm in Eugene Oregon home of the Oregon Ducks and uh, it is a rainy Oregon Duck Day here in Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, but yeah, you know, you know, Brian, and I, you know, we we talk about being cranky, or whatever. But as, as we as we uh, do what we do at Heinz, and, and I run a, a practice area called Pipeline Performance, right? We're we're sort of sales pipeline people, we're revenue people, we're results oriented folks, and there's just so much noise, which I, I guess we are contributing to the noise, but hopefully with some clarity around actually what it takes to build a funnel, what it takes to build a pipeline, how you actually execute sales and marketing for you know your monthly or quarterly objectives or whatever it is. And so we've decided to add our voice to that with hopefully a lot of, of, of practical insight um, and some perspectives along the way. Right, right. Well, I think we have a great topic today. It's a common topic. It's gaining some momentum, but at the same time, we hear a lot of confusion, and and that's the noise around account-based marketing or account-based selling and marketing. And uh, I wanted to see if we could you know, maybe talk through some of this a little bit and take some of the mystery out of it because I, I have to tell you, um, just to kind of play on words a little bit, uh, a lot of the noise that I hear, it, it does make me cranky. Um, and, and I want to see if we can maybe, you know, just break it down a little bit and help demystify some of the elements around account-based marketing. And, uh, you know, I think one of the things that, we could talk about robert is is account-based marketing new the short answer is no uh maybe in label um and i think this you know this 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 has a a, a particular applicability to, to business to business selling so you know it's not new to salespeople. Salespeople people have always thought about life in terms of the target account selling or named accounts or you know, their sort of territory plan or whatever it is what what account-based marketing is sort of now you know marketing getting this religion and uh understanding that you know campaigns need to be aligned around a very intentional set counts or um you know and in, 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 in the, the i guess the, the consulting 
consulting world, right? The ideal customer profile. And this is just about being very intentional and very methodical, right? It's not activity for activity's sake. It's sort of saying, in my markets, in my segments, these are these accounts. These are the people at those accounts I need to reach. Um, and I'm going to align and coordinate and essentially orchestrate, you know, my sales and marketing activities to that end. So I don't think right. it's new in terms of a desired outcome. I think it's maybe uh, a little bit new in terms of label. And, and again, I think it's going to get at something that for, you know, 10 years people have been preaching about sales and marketing alignment. Um, you know, if everybody aligns around revenue, um, then I think we are, uh, you know, potentially a little more efficient the way we go. And I think that's one of the good outcomes that comes out of ABM. Absolutely, and I think one of the things that's, that I really like that excites me about account-based marketing is is the intentional focus. So, you know, with demand generation or lead generation, what has driven marketers is just, okay, we need to generate leads, and the, the outcome is just generating leads, and then we'll throw them over the fence or over the, the cubicle wall, and uh, sales, it's sales problem from there. The problem with that is, you know, we're, that doesn't work anymore. I mean, you can certainly still focus on generating leads and individual contacts play a role in account-based marketing. But when you are intentionally focusing on an account, there are multiple individuals within that account. So if you are, let's say you're focusing on a segment or maybe a region and you have to uh, pursue or, or manage how you're going to market to or engage with specific personas within those accounts, and each one of those are going to have different messages, they will have different motivations and influences and roles to play, it's important to recognize how to treat those those contacts individually, right? Um, or as much as possible that's relevant to them in their world. You can't just blast everybody with messages or, or put content out there just expecting that to be relevant to everybody in, in your market. So, you know, I, I think the intentional piece, I really like how you state that. It's just, it's very intentional and focused and it, you may not have the volume, but the quality of the outcomes yeah. should hopefully be better. Would you agree, or yeah. do you have thoughts on I, that? I would, yeah, absolutely. Right, and I think it, I think it creates a better experience for everyone. Right, it's a better experience for the potential customer, so that they're not being, you know, uh, poorly targeted with irrelevant messages to do something they don't want to do. You know, there's a dial in in terms of the need or the pain they have, and and the outcome they're seeking, and kind of a very intentional, methodical conversation. So. Um, you know, you have a much better experience. And look, the, the dirty little secret is that just because you can name all the accounts that you want to sell to and make your customers doesn't mean they're all ready to buy from you. Right. And you know, if you have sort of a scorched earth policy where you're you're like, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna pummel you with phone calls and emails for five days, and if you don't capitulate, <laughs> right, I'm gonna move on to the next one. Like, I, that doesn't work in this kind of model. And, and as I coach companies, and, and when we get in and we talk about targets and segments, like. But great. That was a conversation I was having earlier today. There's 3,000 potential customers in the segment we're talking about, right? Your swagger needs to be, they all will become my customer. It won't be tomorrow. It won't be next month, next quarter, but eventually you'll get them all. And if you have that mindset, then how you treat everybody through that process, uh, I think, has a little more discipline to it. So, yeah, I I, I certainly think it is a... um, I think it creates a better experience, again, from from the person who's being sold to, but I also think internally experience is better as well and so you're right you're not going to have the marketing's not going to be able to generate its report that says it generated a thousand leads and then sales has to say yeah but only eight percent of those actually had you know of any type of qualification so you sort of elevate beyond that a little bit um and it becomes again a conversation around you know of those two thousand or three thousand accounts who's our tier one tier two tier three what are we programmatically doing to bring those people in understanding that not everybody's going to be ready um, and just have that much more sort of you know, elevated, I guess, and enlightened conversation internally. So, again, everybody wins, right? That's the, I guess maybe that's the uh, one of the bottom lines. It can come out of ABM. It's done properly. Yeah, and I think what is interesting with this approach, when <clears throat> marketers start thinking about their account-based marketing strategy or whether, you know, how that will work, it's a natural progression to get out of the four walls of their department and actually engage more directly with sales. 
to help identify the accounts, um, how you want to pursue those, who the the critical individuals, the influencers, the stakeholders are within those accounts, what their what sales goals may be um, with with pursuing those accounts. You know, so as opposed to marketing, maybe basing that just purely on anecdotal information or maybe some guesses or you know some database information here or there. All of that is important. It plays a role, but it doesn't give the complete picture. And I, you, know, you mentioned earlier, I think it's a it's it's a natural. It's it's a natural forcing function um, that that doesn't sound natural, but it's a it's a natural way to get those these two groups working together more collaboratively. I think um, so. You know, it's just a matter of coming up with the the, the objectives, who you want to focus on, um, where they are, and you know. I like how you said that the swagger of pursuing accounts that you want. Okay, these are the accounts we're going after. It is a finite universe. It's a finite pool here. This is, these are the accounts that we're going to go after. It will take time, but at least we know what we're going after, right? Right, yeah, for sure. It's the, it's the you will be mine uh, mindset. Um, you know, what, what's interesting also about account-based marketing is when you think about um, different revenue streams, you have your net new, which is, you know, brand new customer, new contract to bring into the thing. And so there's a lot of lead gen, demand gen that, that, that focuses in around that. But there is a side of it, which is existing customers, right? And people that have been a customer for a while and maybe you don't have a concerted sort of growth in existing accounts model. And so those people are kind of left to their own to sort of, you know, try to try to upsell or extend the relationship or whatever it is. And you can get very programmatic in your marketing around that as well. Right. So account based marketing is not only sort of just for net new. Um, it can certainly be for growing, expanding and continuing uh, existing customer relationships. And you know, Brian, you know, I've talked about this in the past, right? There's, there's, you know, lots of companies don't really have core competencies around customer marketing, right. In terms right. of, um, of, of leveraging what they worked so hard to get in terms of an initial initial con- uh, customer conversion, not only just expanding in that account, right, but doing the right things to retain the customer, right, and, and to make sure that they are um, you know, happy and, and you don't get a cancellation, and you know all these things that sort of factor into what falls out the back end of your of your funnel. Sometimes as you work so hard to get stuff in, get it converted, you know, create a customer. Um, but if you, if you can't keep that customer for as long as it actually took you to cover your cost of acquiring that customer, your, your business is broken. Absolutely. And I think, you know, that's actually a really good cutoff point for <clears throat> our first break. Excuse me. Um, what I'd like to do is we'll take a short break here. And then when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about the actual customer marketing piece. And then I want to get into marketing technology or some of the components I think uh, are valuable or some of the critical categories that can support an account bo- account based marketing strategy. So, let's take a short break here and when we get back, uh, we'll just continue this discussion. Marketers acknowledge that account based marketing is important, but what does that really mean? ABM requires a deep understanding of your target accounts and the people within its internal buying committee. Where do you even start? Sign up now for the Modern Marketers Workshop, ABM, From Strategy to Action and Results, a fully online workshop, April 18th to the 20th, 11 a.m. to 1230 Pacific each day. Visit www.heinzmarketing.com slash workshops. That's H-E-I-N-Z marketing.com and register today. Whether you're producing a seminar series, user's conference, lunch and learn, or exhibiting at a trade show, Validar has a solution. From capturing leads at trade shows to managing on-site registration, tracking session attendance, gathering information, and providing sponsors lead retrieval, we have a full suite of solutions for you. Since 2005, Validar has been turning corporate events and trade shows into better business. Call 888-784-2929 or visit us at Validar.com. And now back to uh, Brian and his partner, the talking about all things cranky here, I guess, here today. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for uh, uh, that waiting for us on that short break. Um, Brian Hansford here with Heinz Marketing, and on the line with me is my colleague, Robert Pease, who runs our pipeline marketing practice. And we're talking account, about account-based marketing. And uh, before the break, we just started talking a little bit about customer marketing, how 
account-based marketing isn't all about net new accounts or net new business. One of the biggest treasures, if not the biggest treasure business has, if they're lucky enough to have customers, is you know being able to go deeper, land and expand, and find new opportunities within existing accounts. And in general, we don't see a lot of businesses on the B2B side that are really focused or intentional about that. And, you know, just looking at that as the opportunity, they, it's all about net new logos and and growing business through um, net new accounts. And we're missing a lot of opportunities here, I think, um, in general with new customers. So, Robert, how, you know, you mentioned that just before the break, how we can pursue or look at pursuing customers um, or n- new business within existing customers. How, you know, how do we apply account-based marketing? How do we break through the noise just to look at it, look at the business that way? Yeah, no, it's, you know, there's, there's, you know, sales functions around account management have existed for forever, right? So once a customer converts, it's someone's sort of job and responsibility to, manage that customer or, or, you know, do it from a sales standpoint. And I think that it, this is about, again, another area of alignment back into marketing. And it depends on the type of company you have, right? If you're one product company, then that's kind of a different scenario. But if you have multiple product lines or multiple service lines, um, you know, getting this sort of, uh, you know, the, the the method and the approach of, of how you engage and what you do and how you upsell or resell or how you market to that existing customer base. I mean, that may very well be through the account manager, but, you know, they have to have the same sort of programmatic support as, as like a sales development person does, right? Or sure. a salesperson. It's like, what, you know, wh- where do we want to take this relationship and what do we want to do? Do we just want to be on the annual, re- annual renewal cycle? And so That's we're just right. trying to make sure, you know, keep the business in place or is it, you know, we have, we step back in our business and we know, you know, our initial beachhead is going to be a thousand dollars a month, but we have other products and services that we can sell that can take that up to three thousand dollars a month. What's the program and the plan to get there? Um, and it's essentially, you know, potentially the same kind of lead demand gen. You're trying to qualify uh, potential um, expansion opportunities and you're trying to support those through the process. But I think it is, I think a lot of it's just sort of, you know, getting that kind of account management, account development, uh, uh, posture, uh, and enabling that from a marketing standpoint, because so much of marketing is related to sort of lead demand gen, right? Feeding the funnel. Um, and I just think the customer marketing just sort of gets, you know, kind of placed on a back burner or, you know, it's someone's person's job description, right? But it, but it's sort of, it ain't broke. So, you know, and oh, if someone tur- churns or if there's a customer satisfaction issue, that's, you know, customer support or customer service. And it's not a core marketing uh, piece. I mean, a lot of, you know, just to extend the point a little bit here, you know, routinely when I step into companies and they don't have a programmatic and repeatable referral program. I mean, your customers are your best sources of new customers, um, and you don't necessarily always have to do giveaways and incentives. And sometimes you just ask and tell them right. how they can be helpful um, and give them a way to do it. And, and you know, and if, and if you need to incent, then think about it. It may not make a hill of beans that you're going to give them a, you know, a discount off of their bill. They may want an Amazon gift card. So I think all those things come into it, but, um, you know, at a bare minimum, you have to have a customer referral program in place, and it needs to be thought about and owned, I believe, by marketing as a, as a program, and it needs structure, it needs management, it needs reporting, and, and, and creativity um, for execution. Right. Now, you mentioned the, the renewal program, and I, I think we see this all the time, and I've certainly worked for companies that do this. They consider their customer marketing uh, when they send an invoice to get the annual renewal, and that's actually the back, you know, completely backwards. Um, you know, just reaching out to them, the only time you reach out or engage is whether or not you know, you have a technical problem, product support, or you want to get them to renew. Um, there's so many other opportunities and ways to reach out and touch that that gem, that treasure of the business that you've worked so hard to build up. And I, you know, I think if 
I, like, I really like the idea of a referral program. And in fact, mm-hmm. uh, I was just speaking with a business yesterday, and over 80% of their net new business comes as a result of referrals. And so they want to figure out how to tap into that and make it a much more programmatic approach, which is really exciting to hear that. They recognize that. Um, but, you know, it's it, it's not always the case. I think it's easily overlooked. So, well, hey, Robert, let's talk for just a few minutes about you know, some of the technology components that we can wrap around or use to enable an account-based marketing strategy. I actually wrote a blog on this um, on Heinz Marketing Blog and, and posted it on my LinkedIn profile. I think there are you know, for me personally, when I look at this when in this very complicated universe of marketing technologies, I, I, I view, you know, there are four core categories or four co- core components of an ABM strategy. And there's all kinds of niche technology that you can add on top of that. But I think, you know, when uh, if you look at marketing automation integrated with CRM, uh, then you have sales enablement predictive analytics, and then on the back end just to help not only measure what's happening or has happened, but give some foresight or vision potentially what could come down in the future through attribution, uh, marketing or marketing performance management. Um, so, you know, those are a lot, those are all big categories in and of themselves. But do you have any thoughts on, you know, how to use technology um, just real quickly in the last minute that we have here, uh, you know, how, how to, to enable a, an account-based marketing process? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a I'm a believer in enabling process with technology, and so you know, get get the business process down, and then if there are places where there's inefficiency or lack of visibility, then you can automate around that, right? I mean, I think that stuff that is, you know, the multi-touch sort of outbound selling tools, the sales enablement stuff, mechanically is very good and it works like it needs to, but the brain work is what is the story that you're unfolding and in what order. Um, but once you get that story down, then you know how someone's going to get engaged with you. You can certainly optimize around that. I think there's tons of really cool things around predictive analytics and predictive scoring. Um, because, again, the, the awesome thing here is with uh, with an account-based approach, you know who your customers are. You know what they look like. Um, and you can use that data, right, to do all sorts of different interesting things, right? Find additional ones, understand where they are in the buying cycle. Um, so I think that that's, there's still a lot of TDD on that. I think tracking um, and engagement, I think, again, it's like, Anything that will connect the dots between what marketing is doing and what sales is doing for a unified picture of funnel activity um, just helps the business no matter what. Right? Yeah. There's lots of different uh, vendors that float around in those spaces. Yeah, I think one of the nice things, uh, one of the components, you know, the predictive piece you can find uh, with some uh, a very high confidence, you know, companies that are good fit, that may have initiatives, um, have budget. There's all kinds of data points and attributes that you can you can develop those models on. Uh, but then you know things like sales enablement, where sales enablement has been a, a phrase or a term and a process that's been around for a very long time. But I think there's tools now that make it a much more integrated process to help marketing and sales work together. So that you have consistent messaging. It helps sales reps become more productive. I guess it's spending more time selling. Um, um, and, you know, it, it feeds into supporting the overall funnel effort, uh, which I think is very exciting. Um, whereas before, you know, sales reps are it's still very common. Sales reps are just, they're on their own, developing their own messages and, you know, maybe their own sales tools and content. So um, so anyway, you know, let, let, uh, let's wrap up that piece of this, the discussion. And I, I think we have another break here. And let's... Uh, Let's turn it over and um, uh, see what what we have. And well, actually, we're hanging in with us. Actually, we're coming to the end of our half hour. Coming here. to the end of it. Okay. There you go. That went fast. <laughs> you're at. You're, you're at. at. That was that was their half hour in a in a few seconds there. Yeah. So you know, thanks. It's awesome to have a co-pilot that actually knows what the hell's going Not on. Where here we're because, flying. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I'm just along for the ride. So it's a great pleasure to talk with this audience. Thank you so much for producing this. Robert, 
Safe travels, man. I, I hope you don't yeah, drown the in uh, the duck country down there. That's enemy territory for me down there. So uh, be careful and uh, <laughs> know, safe okay, travels. I'm not, I'm not taking. I'm not taking any sides here. I'm from the south. I have my own. Uh, I have my own bias. <laughs> and how does everybody reach you guys if they want to hear more or hear your other podcast? So we are kicking off uh, the 2017 editions of the Marketing Cranks podcast. We'll actually get into production with those hopefully next week. And you will be able to get those on SoundCloud, iTunes, and we'll, always, uh, we'll also publish availability of those on the Heinz Marketing blog. Um, we very much like to hear any insights or input from anybody. Um, you can reach me, Brian, at HeinzMarketing.com, and that's Brian with an I, B-R-I-A-N. And, uh, Robert, how do we get in touch with you? You can reach me at Robert at HeinzMarketing.com, and that's Robert with an R. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening in. And if you have any feedback, questions, or how you look at account-based marketing, uh, please, you know, we would love to hear from you and continue the conversation. All right. We'll leave it there. You've been surfing along with the uh, cranky crew from uh, Heinz Marketing here as they take a look at the latest and greatest in uh, all sorts of ways to build your pipeline. <laughs>